Hi there, welcome to case study video number six. When the horizon begins to get a little bit more complex, as it is in this case with this boulder on a beach in Bali in Indonesia, we will find that the quick selection tool that has become our default go-to tool uh, will be pushed uh, to the extreme because it's asked to do an awful lot of complex work. The reason we're having to take two exposures in this scenario is that the 181 second, the three minute exposure that I needed to, to expose this beach by moonlight has produced little star trails. And to my mind, that's just a, a look of untidy work. So I've done a shorter exposure of 34 seconds. This is using 14 millimeters. And we have stars that are much nearer to points but it's obviously left our foreground beach somewhat blocked and, and uh, not looking so good. So we're going to ex combine these two exposures to produce a file that's got that nice holistic look. Uh, before we move on, we will just do the normal chromatic aberration and sharpening preset that I always do. And it's a good opportunity to mention one thing. When we're blending multiple exposures, avoid using the clarity slider. The clarity slider produces a tiny little halo around the edge of your subjects, which will make blending these a much, much harder scenario because the selection tool will snap onto the halo and it won't be snapping onto the edge of the file. So again, my normal method is to equalize these files a fraction. Try and hold back on the shadow and highlights uh, sliders too much because you end up with a situation again where you start producing shadows and highlights halos. We can increase this exposure a little bit. Let's see, yeah, 1.2 stops, something like that. And maybe open up the shadows a fraction. And now we have two files that are ready to get blended together. With them both selected, we do our normal edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. It's a case of what we'll do first is we will look at the quick selection tool and see what happens and whether that's going to be an acceptable result or not. Um, what we do need to start investigating is an alternative. So we shall look at that in a moment. OK, so here's our two layers in Photoshop as per normal. The quick selection tool, we drag across the horizon. You will find that it's going to snap to uh, some other areas. So we will need to go in and refine this tool. Now, as you will notice over here, I've just painted over the whole lot. You can't go around the edge because a lot of these areas are what we're trying to select as well. Zooming in, we can refine this a little by holding down the Alt key, which makes our cursor into a little minus instead of a plus. And we can draw along that horizon line just to snap it to the ocean. We will investigate ways to avoid some of these problems in our final processed files. And there we go. Like I said, again, I've drawn over that horizon there because there are trees involved in there. This little bit in here will either clone out, I would imagine, or we can, we can ask the mask to create it if we want to. Um, so there we are, we've drawn over that area and that is a very, very loose mask. Now, if you tried to use that mask, uh, you would end up with something that looked like that, which is not what we're looking for. We're, we're basically gone into a situation whereby the mask has now avoided the entire bush on top of the tree, uh, sorry, on top of the boulder. Any a uh, smart radius that we would normally do that has very little effect. I am going to use a reasonably big brush. And when you start to draw over this area where we know the bush exists, 
we can start to see that it's doing a better job. I usually find two or three times is enough. You know, once you've once you've found out where your vegetation is, um, there was that wee touch up there, wasn't there? Yeah, I was not picking that up at all. So what we have is, you know, it's done a pretty good job. There's a little bit of shading where it's picked up some areas of the sky. Uh, there's a couple of little areas here where it's picked up parts of the boulder. But on the whole, that's not done a bad job at all. So I think we can click OK. And we will see we now have our mask, which I will do my normal of select, save selection, and call it sky. But in this case, we've it's done it the wrong way around. So what we've done is we've we've kept the sky from the top file and we've brought in the boulder from the bottom file, which is a complete opposite of what we want to do. So we need to undo the layer mask. And the quickest way to do it is Command Shift I, and that makes an inverse of that selection. So we can select that and call it Save Selection and call it Boulder. I always name my masks. It's as simple as that. You always know then in the channels palette which mask is which. We have our layers palette again. With that selected, we create our new mask and we now have a, a pretty good mask where the two have joined together. There is a little spot in there that's not very good and this looks a little darker than perhaps it could be. So we can go in here with a black brush at a medium to low opacity, so say 23% and 40%. And we can open that up a touch. We'll just see if a higher opacity does actually, yeah. So that is just a dark part of the boulder because it was in shadow. This little section down in here, is not too difficult to erase. Uh, I would be inclined to darken that a little anyway, because it's going to be, you know, a, a more receding element. So we want to keep it out of there. So on the whole, that's done a pretty good job. That is a reasonable demonstration of how to um, use the quick selection tool to create a fairly complex mask. And in this situation, it has done a reasonably good job. So we will call that an end for this. And then in the next video, we'll look at an alternative method. Um, but for now, that's the end of case study video six.